Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jacek Szafran. I am representing the Department of Structure and Mechanics, uh, Mechanics of Uch University of Technology. Uh, I have a great pleasure and honor to be a participant of the conference Eurosteel 2021. My title of my presentation is uh, Using Full-Scale Test Results for Designing of Steel Telecommunication Towers. Uh, the presentation I outline is given here. I would like to start by saying a few words about the goal of this um, presentation, but also uh, for the uh, full paper. Uh, then I would like to present the two independent towers that, that I would like to compare later on. Mm, uh, some results. Uh, I would like to start by presenting the movies that captured the failure mechanisms, then to present the displacements and what is also very important in engineering practice in terms of telecommunication towers, uh, reinforcement scenarios for both structures. And of course I would like to finish my presentation by saying final remarks. Uh, the main goal of this paper is to provide the recommendation for designing state of the art uh, and what is very important, lightweight steel lattice telecommunication towers. I strongly believe that those recommendations are important because that uh, they are uh, presented at the basis of the experimental results obtained for uh, those two structures, but, but in full scale tests. Of course, taking into account the time of, of this presentation, I, I am not able to, to uh, present all the information given in the, in the manuscript. So I have I, I just decided to focus on three questions that I would like to answer. First one is: Does an X bracing system made of circular hollow sections provide an effective solution from a constructional point of view. Second is what are differences in load carrying capacities between towers with single and symmetrical bracing pattern. And the third, uh, how can the load carrying capacity of tower structures be uh, effectively increased for higher loads or is it possible at all? Uh, first tower, as you can see here, is a single bracing seven sections or circular hollow section members. Mm, uh, uh, very slender tower structures with a cable climbing ladder on the tower uh, wall. Um, joint between bracing and legs are one bolt joint. Mm, the tower before the test you can observe here and also um, um, I'm presenting the mechanical properties for uh, obtained from, from the tension, simple tension test and it's worth to mention here that the nominal grade of steel was S355 for tower number one. Tower number uh, two, uh, also uh, seven sections, also uh, all circular hollow sections members, but the main difference is that the, the distance between the legs are, uh, are larger and also the, 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 the bracing system is X symmetrical uh, type. What is important also, um, the cable and the climbing ladder is placed at one leg and also the, the, the pictures presenting the, the joints and the tower itself before the test also the mechanical properties taken from the tension test and I have to tell that the steel here nominally was uh, S235 let me present the first results is a uh, Mm, a failure mechanism for a uh, uh, tower number one, as you can see, the single bracing, and of course there is a lot of different details about about the experiment itself, but um, it's impossible to to describe them all here. But the failure mechanism, as you can see, uh, in this type of tower, 
as uh, the, the, the failure of uh, bracing them. Of course, the, the place of external load and the, the application of that is also important, but we can observe that the, the failure first. The weakest link here is our, uh, our bracings. Uh, second tower. Second tower uh, is presenting here, and you can see it at that X symmetrical bracing, symmetrical connected with uh, the legs and the climbing, cable climbing ladder on one of the, of the legs. Here, the situation is uh, totally different. The failure occurred in the in the lack of the bottom section of the tower. And so you will have an opportunity to see the buckling of the leg and also the, the, the global deformation of the tower after plastic deformation of the, of the uh, bottom leg. And the movies here are very important because we can observe and find, which is crucial, what was the weakest link. Here, we can see that the first, uh, that failure is lack, and then bracing members. Uh, then I would like to present a few of the results, namely displacements. Uh, displacements here are um, given for uh, joints of the um, of the top of the tower number one and number two. Here on this diagram, they are called A1 and A2. Uh, so I have decided to present just two um, planes of of, of those displacements. First one is longitudinal to the um, uh, external load uh, for uh, uh, axis X. Uh, 
and we can see that the differences between those uh, two towers are quite large. Um, for example, for an external load equal to 60 kN, the displacement for, uh, for tower number one was uh, a little bit more than 90 centimeter, centimeters. Uh, 94 centimeters obtained for uh, tower number two was for uh, external load equal to 110. This um, next um, graph here uh, symbolizes the differences between uh, the diagonal um, bracing patterns. The plane here is perpendicular to the uh, direction of the external load. And we can see that the second tower, there are zeros up to, up to the um, force equal to 50 kilonewtons. But for tower number one with non-symmetrical bracing system, we have uh, uh, values of the displacement since the very beginning of, uh, of the test. Uh, very important, uh, taking into account engineering uh, practice, are experimental failure loads, 61 for tower number one and six, uh, 127 for tower number two, but, two, but differences in self-weight uh, are only 10 kilonewtons. Uh, reinforcement scenarios for uh, such a failures in, uh, uh, are, in terms of the telecommunication towers, are very important because very often we change the telecommunication equipment and implementation, for example, implementation of 5G, uh, and so on, so on, so on. So the the the, the, the easiest way to uh, reinforce uh, to reinforce bracing are replacing them. Of course, we can do it in different way. We can apply the additional bracings, like you can see here on this slide, but it is important that we, so we are creating the X type of bracing systems, but it is important that uh, in service, we have a cable climbing ladder on one wall, so we have to, uh, make it possible to uh, to uh, to create and to apply on our tower, and of course it makes our job our work harder. Mm. Uh, uh, tower number two, of course, replacing is the simplest way, but we can also uh, support. Ex we can create an extra support for a uh, for our legs to increase their uh, buckling capacity, and it is very easy because we don't have a cable climbing ladder on the wall, we have them on one of the legs. So we don't need to, um, uh, we don't need to deal with uh, this ancillaries. Let me uh, create some final remarks. Using circular hole section for all structure members uh, are very, it is very good idea because we significantly reduct the aerodynamic drag of the structure. Uh, also, application of the X bracing system, as de demonstra demonstrated above, is very, um, very good idea for uh, uh, for uh, towers that might be light and also high load carrying capacity. To um, reduce the displacement, I would suggest to uh, this to, to create the distance between the legs as a one tenth of the height of over overall structure. And of course, the arrangement and, uh, of axis and cable ladder should, should allow access to primary structural members, as I have presented before. Thank you very much for your kind attention.